Welcome back. In this lecture, we will be discussing these topics, processes, driving forces uh, for these processes. And uh, these driving forces will give rise to fluxes. In the main reason we are discussing these topics uh, is to contrast this situation against thermodynamic equilibrium. Okay, so that will be the focus of this course, but to just contrast what is systems that are not in thermodynamic equilibrium, uh, that's why we are going to discuss these things. Okay, just to contrast this against uh, thermodynamic equilibrium. Let's move on. Uh, for example, let us consider uh, uh, the soda, okay, so which uh, uh, with a very, uh, yeah, so this, the, the, the way uh, uh, the system progresses is uh, in the initial stages, uh, there is, uh, okay, in the initial stages, this is where the system starts, uh, soda is cold, all right, so when you take it out of the fridge, it's cold and the it is it has a lesser temperature compared to its ambient uh, ambient atmosphere all right so uh, because of the difference in temperature that is the temperature the atmosphere outside of soda is at a higher temperature there is a heat transfer okay so heat flux from the atmosphere to the soda so this heat flux, once uh, it gets into the soda, increases the temperature of the soda. So as the temperature of the soda gets closer and closer to the room temperature, that is 25 degrees centigrade, uh, what is observed is the rate of heat transfer, rate of flux, okay, heat flux from the uh, room to the soda decreases and finally, the, there is no net rate of heat transfer between the soda and the room temperature, uh, and the room, all right? So the reason for heat flux is the difference between uh, temperature of the room and the soda. So heat always flows from, this is a type of thermodynamic process, okay? Heat always flows from regions of high temperature to regions of low temperature. We'll see what in later lectures, all right? For now, uh, what I'm trying to elaborate here is there is a particular driving force, which is the difference in temperature. This difference in temperature gives rise to heat flux, all right? So there are other such transport processes. Uh, for example, a momentum flux or a fu fluid flow can uh, exist because of difference in pressures, okay? So whenever things are flowing, one way of making fluids flow is uh, by increasing pressure at one side and having lesser pressure on the other side, right? So that's, uh, uh, so that can also be done. So again, there's a different driving force and gives rise to different kind of flux. Then you can have a concentration difference, which gives rise to mass flux. So what is that we are observing? This uh, thing, uh, animations uh, taken from Wikipedia. So you have uh, uh, a system here where let's say, uh, uh, if you have just one system, it takes uh, this one particle, let's say on this side of the compartment, it takes a long time, but here it's easy to uh, look at what what's going on, okay? So to begin with, uh, all uh, that is, these particles are concentrated in this compartment, okay? So uh, when the particles are concentrated in, the, in this compartment to begin with, eventually uh, these flux, these things tend to, these particles tend to distribute, okay? Get transferred from this compartment. This compartment is, uh, it is indicated by this line, Go, goes from this compartment to this compartment. All right, so what, where does the uh, same thing is indicated here? Okay, so instead of uh, one discrete particle, there are many discrete particles, all these indicated by average concentration. So just to, okay, so there's high concentration here, there's a flux that goes from regions of 
high concentration to regions of low concentration. So what is the driving force? Uh, the driving force here is the concentration difference. And what is the flux? Mass flux. Okay, so we have seen three different driving forces. Uh, temperature differential gives rise to heat flux, uh, which is very, very similar to concentration difference giving rise to mass flux. Similar uh, in the uh, mathematical, underlying mathematical equation. So fluid flow is slightly more complex than uh, heat flux and mass flux, uh, but there the, uh, the driving force which we indicated was the pressure difference, which gives rise to uh, fluid flow, uh, momentum flux, All right? So, uh, uh, so even though I indicated that mass flux is due to concentration, the real reason is uh, for flow is what is called chemical potential, okay? So this is a term I've indicated uh, within quotes because this is a topic we will elaborate in much greater detail in the later lectures. So just to uh, clarify one particular aspect of mass flux, I'm putting this slide, and it's also a very important slide, uh, uh, important process in engineering. This is something which you might have heard in your hostel rooms, in your houses, there are something called RO plants, right? So what are these? These are reverse osmosis plants. For example, to get uh, clean water from impure water. In this case, uh, we are getting desaline, de we, are, uh, uh, we are getting pure water from saline water, from salty water. So here, if you see, uh, what is that? So you are pumping in saline water you are able to get uh, clean water and uh, concentrated water. Okay, so in, in some ways, it looks like uh, the water is going from regions of uh, low concentration to high concentration, as opposed to what was uh, mentioned in the previous uh, uh, slide. Uh, actually, the driving force is not just the concentration uh, difference, it's actually difference in chemical potential you increase the chemical potential uh, because of certain reasons like by applying pressure and so on. And there is a semi-permeable membrane, okay? Uh, which allows only the flow of water and prevents the flow of uh, salt, right? So, so, there is, so there are two uh, reasons uh, here. We are able to change the chemical potential not only because of concentration, but also due to pressure and so on, okay? So just to, uh, the only emphasis I'm trying to make here in this slide is it's not the difference in concentration, but the more accurate statement is difference in chemical potential is what gives rise to uh, mass flux. And this is used in what is called reverse osmosis, uh, which is very important process for getting clean water. Clean water, as you might know, is a very important grand challenge, especially in a country like India. Uh, this this uh, slide shows uh, how water stressed uh, different countries are. India requires uh, uh, clean water. I mean, as engineers, you should be aware of all these uh, important problems, okay, which, uh, uh, which most of the engineers are trying to address, right? So, Smalley is a, a Nobel laureate who found out uh, who characterized C60 buckyballs uh, in the later uh, uh, parts of his uh, career, he focused on certain grand challenges, especially in energy, okay? So he listed from the order of uh, high, lowest priority to highest priority, and he listed energy as uh, the most important problem. Uh, so in fact, uh, aspects much, uh, many aspects of uh, energy transformation will be addressed in this course on thermodynamics. Uh, just to get back, uh, what uh, uh, we are trying to emphasize is thermodynamic driving force indicates a lack of equilibrium. Okay, so this is what is going to be uh, the content of the next class, what determines uh, thermodynamic equilibrium. But in this uh, lecture, what I'm trying to emphasize is thermodynamic driving forces like temperature driving force, chemical potential differences, pressure differences are indicative of lack of equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium, and leads to fluxes, heat fluxes, mass fluxes, momentum fluxes, and so on. So the heat flux is due to temperature driving force, 
momentum flux pressure differences, mass flux due to difference in chemical potential. So if you maintain a constant driving force, you can get steady state fluxes. Okay, so this is often uh, a condition that you see in many engineering systems. Okay, there is a drive, there is a constant driving force giving rise to steady state fluxes. Uh, so what is important to understand, uh, be it steady state uh, fluxes or unsteady state process, there can be uh, there are quantitative relationship to uh, quantify the steady state, unsteady state processes using macroscopic variables like temperatures and pressure. Okay, so this is uh, not the, the topic of this course, but uh, there are uh, in in other years of course, which is taken by many engineers, uh, fluid mechanics and rate processes. You will be addressing these kinds of things. So how do you quantitatively describe these forces uh, using? Uh, these temperature gradients, pressure gradients, concentration gradients, and so on, all right? So, all right. Uh, so uh, flow processes, as I said, uh, is not indicative of thermodynamic equilibrium, but the these flow processes, especially steady state uh, flow processes, exist in many engineering situations like turbines, pumps, boilers, condensers, heat exchangers, and so on, okay? So most of the engineering processes, okay, operate 24 hours a day. You don't have so-called batch process. You don't have processes that operate just eight hours a day or something, all right? So things operate in a continuous manner at a steady value, okay? So there's a lot of process control uh, that is uh, uh, done to keep the flow uh, the rates of processes steady. Okay, so this is something that uh, seen often in any engineering context. Uh, context, but the important emphasis is they are not systems that are in thermodynamic equilibrium. So, for example, here we are talking about an open system, whereas there's mass in and mass out. But if I look uh, at the amount of mass inside this control volume, the mass is constant. All right, even the energy is constant. But this is uh, not a system that is in thermodynamic equilibrium. So thermodynamics of steady states is not a, a topic that's going to be discussed in this course. We are going to be discussing only thermodynamics of sy systems that are e that are going to be in equilibrium. But we'll sort of address things, uh, address the issue of why things go towards thermodynamic equilibrium. But thermodynamic of steady states is not going to be discussed here. And a, a very good book to address this topic is uh, mentioned in the previous lecture, uh, one of the previous lecture. This is a book that is addressed for UG students that addresses this topic of thermodynamic of steady states. So in the next lecture, we look at uh, features of thermodynamics.